Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do a John's Arcade pinball review. That is right guys, we're gonna review a pinball machine. Now if you guys remember a few weeks ago I picked up a Black Knight pinball machine. I actually traded a Donkey Kong, a very nice Donkey Kong for this Black Knight and a few weeks ago I released a video after I got the machine. Now when I got the Black Knight it was not working and in that video we kind of covered how I fixed it. Uh, basically the battery holder uh, was disconnected and the game was kind of stuck in test and today we're going to do a game play review. Now Black Knight, which is right here, was released in 1980 by Williams. Now this game was designed by Steve Ritchie. Now Steve Ritchie is like a rock star game designer. And if you ask me, I think Steve Ritchie and Pat Lawler are probably number one and number two. You pick the order of the greatest pinball designers ever. Now Steve Ritchie is responsible for like high speed, high speed to getaway, F14, uh, well Black Knight obviously, Black Knight 2000. Uh, Steve Ritchie did a bunch of games for Stern like ACDC. Um, he did Spider-Man. You know, this guy has been around for a long time. He started actually as a designer for Atari and he worked like on Superman and stuff, and he went on to, went over to Williams and did like uh, I think Flash and stuff like that. So this game though was released in 1980, and this game really kind of established a lot of things that we see now in modern pinball machines, and really did a lot of firsts. And the big thing that this game did, this is the first solid state game to have multi levels. Okay, so we have a lower level down here. Okay, and there's some ramps here and the ball goes up to a second level. Now this game is actually pretty loaded for a game from 1980. It has four flippers. It has two up here and it has two down there. It has a lot of drop targets. This actually is a drop target game. There's three here and there's three there. And then in the back here, we also have three there and three there. And it is a pretty neat game. Now it is from 1980, so it's kind of old, really. I mean, compared to my other games, it's kind of a simple game. But you gotta realize in 1980, when this came out, it was like no one had seen anything quite like this with the multi-levels and all the flippers and the speech, the talk. Listen to that. I mean, this game actually was a really big deal. Now you can see it has an LED displays in the back, so it's kind of crude. I mean, when you compare it to this, which has a Dodge Matrix display, and Whirlwind, which has an alpha numeric display, Black Knight just has a numeric LED display, it actually has five of them. It's got one here for one player, one for two players, three players, four players, and then down here, um, it has one for credits. On the left, there's 22 credits, and then the right, it shows how many balls are left. And you can see in the back glass here, stuff lights up there, see it's flashing game over. Um, it has all kinds of things that light up back there to kind of tell you what's going on in the game. Um, you can see tilts, uh, shoot agains in there, uh, ball and play lights up. So they kind of had to figure out ways to kind of communicate with, to you without a without a dot matrix display or without an alpha numeric display. And they did it all with kind of light bulbs in the back glass. Now the bad thing about Black Knight though is that for whatever reason, this back glass, um, they don't hold up. Uh, a lot of the games out there uh, the Black Knights are flaking, the back glass is flaking to all heck. Um, it is a mirrored back glass, and I guess Williams re uh, released a, uh, 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 they kind of reproduced the, the back glasses uh, in the late 80s because I think they had a lot of complaints, and some of those reproductions are still floating out around there, and you know, I might replace my back glass, I'm not sure, I think it actually looks kind of good. But the replacements are like $300, and I've seen ones that are a lot worse, and uh, I don't know, I, th I think this one's okay. It's got, you know, some kind of lines and cracks there, but really, when the lights are off and everything, it, it kind of looks okay in the row. I don't really think too much about it. So anyway, I think we should pull off the glass, and I think we should play a game. And uh, well, why don't we do that right now? Let's pull the glass off. All right, I guess I'll show you guys how to pull the back glass off on a pinball machine because you know what? When I first got in this hobby, it was kind of a mystery to me, and I think to a lot of people it is, because um, it's like, how does this back glass come off? I mean, the, the play field glass come off. And basically, you just open the coin door, and there's a little lever right here. See that? And you just kind of move that to the left, and then this piece lifts off like so. And now we can just slide the back glass off. 
And I'm pulling the back glass off because it really makes for a better video because there's no glare or anything. So let's just kind of pull this off. We're just gonna slide it off. And this is tempered glass. And uh, if this glass were to shatter, it would shatter into like a million little like diamonds almost. It, it just, it shatters into a lot of little tiny teeny pieces. Um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't shatter like into giant shards that are kind of dangerous and you could slit your wrist with them. Um, tempered glass, the reason they use that because in, in a commercial environment, you got a bunch of guys that are drunk and stuff and they're pounding the glass and they don't want people to get hurt. So just like in a car, when this shatters, it shatters into a million little harmless pieces. I, I suppose if you get them in your eyes or something it would hurt but uh all right so we got the glass off and uh, let's just kind of take a quick peek at the play field here um you can see there's a lot of lights in this game and uh, i've been tempted to kind of get uh a, an LED kit for this because a lot of people replace the incandescent bulbs that are in here with LEDs um i don't think i'm going to do that um there's a couple cool little features on this game. Right here it says Magna Save. Magna Save when lit, and over here it also says Magna Save. When I'm playing the game, if the ball is about to drain over here on the left, okay, if this is lit, I can press the second flipper button right here, and that will activate a magnet right here that will pull the ball from the lane to this magnet and then drop it down this lane right here. It is a very cool feature. This is the first game to use Magna Save. Um, there's a lot of games that have used this feature since, including today. I think uh, I think Stern has used that. I'm not positive, but I know Stern has done a lot with magnets. Um, so we have a magnet save on this side and also on that side. You can see this side also has two buttons. So that one's for the magnet save. When it's lit, you can pull the ball from the right, the far right drain to that, and then it drops it down here. Um, so we've got our two flippers here. Uh, we've got a kind of a multiplier. I think this is a multiplier. Uh, this is this right here. These lights here uh, light the bonus, the, the the after ball bonus. Okay, and it goes like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it, and then it resets, and then the ten lights, and then it goes eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and this is how you get the points after the ball. Um, we have double scoring. Right when this is lit, we get double score, and that's during the two ball, multi ball, and triple scoring. When that's lit, we get three times the score, and that's during the three ball, multi ball. Um, we have drop targets here and here. Now on the lower play field, and you can see there's three lights right here too. So when we complete this bank of targets, and it is timed by the way, so as soon as I hit one of these targets, a timer's going to start. And I have to get the remaining ones down before the timer runs up. And if I do, I get to light one of these arrows. Now once I do that three times, I light all three. And if I do the same over here, get those down, light an arrow, get those down, light the next arrow, etc. When I light all three on, on the lower play field, I will then light extra ball back here. And then also the same thing back here. If I complete those three sets of targets within the time limit three times, I light all three, same thing over there. On the upper play field, if I do that on both of those, I then light extra ball over here. So there are ways to get extra balls. Um, the multi ball, you can start two different ways. There's a three ball multi ball and there's a two ball multi ball. Um, so you can see up here, we've got this little loop that goes over here. This is how we lock the balls on the top play field. And when we lock three of them, we basically from this flipper go around to up there, it locks the ball and then it kicks one out. If I do that three times, it then starts a three ball multi ball. Now down here though, is a way to start a two ball multi ball. So if I lock one ball up here and then lock a second down here, it'll then start a two ball multi ball. And then all the scores during the two ball are worth double the points. And it's actually kind of cool because on the three ball multi ball, when you start the three ball multi ball, and you have three balls on the table, everything is worth triple the points, okay? And then when if you drain one of those three balls, it then re resorts, uh, reverts back down to double scoring, and then when you have two balls on the table, you're getting double the points, and then when the last one drains, and you only have one ball left, and then it goes back into normal scoring. Um, it's a pretty cool game, really. It actually is, it, it is kind of shallow compared to Fast Break and Whirlwind and Revenge from Mars over here in my basement. But actually for the time, there's actually a lot going on in this game. And then Steve Ritchie is kind of the king of flow, right? And he's got these kind of ramp shots. So when the ball goes down this left lane, it then lights this here, okay? So you go left lane, it lights that, 
you hit this flipper and you go up the ramp and then you get a bonus. And then when you go down this right lane, it then lights this one right here. So you go down the right lane to the right flipper and then up. And then if you come up here, you hit this and you get a bonus. So he kind of has this whole flow thing where it goes left, left flipper, right ramp, right, right flipper, right, uh, left ramp. And it's just left, right, left, right. And he does that a lot in his games. And I think this is where he was kind of really starting to figure out the whole flow thing. So that's really the game, I think, in a nutshell. I mean, really the main goal here is to get all these drop targets, lower and upper, and then lock the balls for multi-ball. And that's really the main gist of the game. And then the whole time you're doing it, you're kind of increasing your bonus right here that you get after you drain. And uh, of course, of course, the Black Knight is taunting us the entire time, which is a huge part of this game. You know, he kind of created this whole adversarial kind of gameplay with the Black Knight. He's done that a whole bunch of times afterwards. Like, F-14 is like you fighting against a Russian pilot who's taunting you. Of course, Black Knight 2000. Uh, God, uh, the, the getaway is, uh, our high speed is you against the cops. You know, he's done a lot of these adversarial type games, and he kind of really figured that out here with the Black Knight. So, alright, I, I think that really kind of covers the gameplay. So, I'm going to set up the tripod here, and uh, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate how the game plays plays and of course keep in mind I am not a good pinball player and by the way check out the cabinet it's pretty cool right um it's got some simple uh, two-color silkscreened artwork. It's got yellow for the sword and then red for these details here. Um, same thing in the front, yellow and black. So what they do is they paint the whole cabinet black, and then they just silkscreen directly on the wood. And they did it on the sides here, and they also did it on the front and then the other side. And also on the head, you can't see, there's also some two-color silkscreening. So I think it's a pretty good-looking game. I mean, that back glass is freaking epic. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is so cool. That's probably one of the greatest back glasses ever, ever in pinball, really. And it's all silkscreen on the glass. It's not a translite. You know, these games over here, like Whirlwind, Whirlwind is a clear piece of plexiglass. And then behind it is a piece of, I think, mylar or uh, some kind of vinyl that is printed. So you have like this thin film um, that it get, that is printed on behind glass. Whereas this is a true silk screen back glass. That ink is directly on the glass. And that's why you get the flaking, unfortunately. But it is just a different process and you kind of have the whole mirror thing going on there. So it's super cool. All right. Let's set up the tripod, let's play a game, and let me show you guys how this game looks and sounds and plays, and you know what? It's pretty great. All right, guys, we have the tripod set up here, and hopefully this is a cool angle for you guys. Now, this game does not have a free play mode. Um, I basically just had to credit up a whole bunch of credits on it, and we're just going to start a game. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we can hear the speech. I will play you, my enemy. Now, check out this music. Is that cool or what? If you guys actually stay tuned to the end of the video, my buddy Matt and I actually sampled this music and we recorded a song using it. It's actually kind of cool. So I'll play that at the end as a special treat, so just stay tuned. Okay, let's start a game. So that's the kind of ball launch music, and when we launch the ball, we're they're gonna hear like a galloping sound. And that's the Black Knight galloping. Hear that? And when you launch the ball, the ball goes right to the top, and we just locked the first ball there. Okay, and now it comes out here. <coughs> And I'm just really trying to keep the ball on the top here. Because this is where everything kind of happens. This is where you start the three ball, multi ball. And you really just kind of want to keep that ball up here. Alright, there we go. We locked the second ball. And let's see if we can lock that third ball. Ah. Okay. And you hear that sound? That is the timer. All right, we just started a two-ball multi-ball. Actually, we started a three-ball multi-ball. I'm sorry, because we locked two up on the top, and then we locked the third on the bottom. And listen to those sounds, guys. I mean, do you recognize those sounds? Those are straight out of Robotron and Defender. And that's because Williams made Robotron Defender, and Larry DeMar actually worked on those games as well, and he worked on this game too. Um, so that's why you hear a lot of the same sounds from in this game that are in Robotron and Defender. Same hardware, same guy. Larry DeMar did the programming on this. And he was kind of Eugene Jarvis's partner on uh, Robotron Defender. 
All right, come on. So we lit the right magnet save here. I want to just kind of show you guys that. So imagine the ball is going to drain here, and if I press this top right uh, button, it's going to pull the ball over. Watch. Ah, uh, there. That's the magnet save. It's pretty cool, right? See, we get that ball. Yeah, I know I cheated. Oh, so really, we're trying to get these drop targets. That's actually not a bad game. 541,000. So now I want to really try to light a multi-ball. I want to get that last target there before the timer goes off. Got it. So you can see we lit that arrow right there. And that crazy sound, that's the timer. That cheer, cheer, cheer. I'm cheating. <laughs> ah. 601,000, but I cheated. 610, 620,000. All right, let's play one more game. I won't cheat this time. Uh, now, this game, of course, is in uh, Pinball Arcade, like on the iPhone and the iPad and all that. So, uh, if you guys want to try it out and you don't have a real machine, definitely check it out there. And you gotta remember, this game's from 1980, so it does play a little bit slower than some of these games from the 90s. I actually have the leg levelers all the way up on the back, and I could not get six and a half degrees. I could get about six and a quarter. Because um, all the games from the 90s and stuff and late 80s, you're supposed to set them to six and a half degrees. With the leg levelers all the way up on the back, the best I could do is six and a quarter. And it still plays a little bit slower than my other games. And also, these flippers are running on lower voltage as compared to later games. Because back in the day, their flippers were underpowered because there just wasn't enough juice going to them. And they corrected that later, I think actually right after this game. Alright, so we just lit that. Ah. I tried saving my ball there at the back to save. Alright, so now we get a last chance here. Which is a, a cool little game mode here. On the drain here, it said last, last chance, and when you get that, it basically releases all the balls that are that are trapped there. And that were locked. Ugh. I know, I suck. You know what? I'm not a good nudger. I'm not a good pinball guy, really. So, I don't know. I mean, that's it. Did you guys get a good taste for what Black Knight's all about? I mean, that's really the game. And uh, I like it because it's it is it is very very different than my other pinball machines. Um, there's something about it because it is from 1980. It's just it is simpler in a lot of ways, and in a way that's kind of good because it really kind of gives me a nice balance down here. You know, I've got a game from 1989. I got a game from 1980, right? Black Knight. I got a game from 89, Whirlwind. I got a game from 90. What is this? 96, NBA Fast Break with a DMD, then I have a game from 99, which is Pinball 2000. So this is really a nice sampling of pinball ha as it has progressed through time. And really, I don't think I'd want to get much older than this one right here, um, because I can't really relate to the pinball games prior to this. I mean, really, I can't relate to this game at all, because when this game came out, I wasn't playing pinball, I was playing video games. You know, I was playing Pac-Man or Space Invaders or Asteroids when this game came out. And pinball, to me, always seemed like an adult kind of thing when I was a kid. And so I've always had a hard time relating to the older pinball machines, because I just didn't play them when I was a kid. And so this game here is kind of... You know, I don't relate to it, but it's got enough here to keep me interested. Any older, I definitely would have no nostalgia. So anyway, cool game. I do like it. Um, I think it has a lot going for it. You know, um, again, for, for 1980, this game was the shit, guys. You got to realize this game was the bomb when it came out. And uh, I think it has held up. It's very cool. So 
Anyway, that's it. That is Black Knight. I hope you guys thought that was cool. I know I suck at pinball. Stop. Don't message me. Don't type that in there. John, you suck at pinball. I know. I know. I do. <laughs> I admit it. So, anyway, that's it. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, really quick, uh, check out my uh, my podcast, Arcade Outsiders, ArcadeOutsiders.com, and also my other podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at VideoGameOutsiders.com. And now, before I leave you guys, I do want to play that song, because... When I got this game, um, my buddy Matt came over, and Matt and I are in a band called The Kill Screens. And we release a CD on iTunes and Amazon, and it's on Spotify. Just do a search for The Kill Screens. Uh, the album's called Science Fiction Movie. So, The Kill Screens Science Fiction Movie. And Matt and I get together like once a week, and we record music, and we make apps and stuff, and, and we do a lot of stuff together. And when I first got this pinball machine, Matt came over. Like, the day I got it working, he came over. And I, 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 you know, I'm like, Matt, this game's pretty cool, and the music and the sounds in it are so badass. And so Matt came over, we were kind of drinking and hanging out and, and playing this game, and, and we're like, you know what, we should sample this. And we did. So we sampled that intro music uh, when, the, when the game starts, and we made a song around it. And we did it in one night. What you're, what you're about to hear here, we did in one freaking night. We never finished the song. We just kind of started it. It was a scratch song. So just keep that in mind here. It's not done, okay? But it is me singing. I'm singing the main vocal line in it, and then Matt's doing the backup. And it, it's, it's kind of a fun, stupid song, but I'm going to play it right now. And actually, I'll, I'll set up a tripod, and I'll play some more Black Knight with my song playing behind it, you know, Matt and I's song. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. It's something a little different. And uh, But really, that's it for this video. I'll play the song, we'll play some Black Knight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys like it. So, all right, let's do it. Yeah. Uh -huh.